In this video on the visual system, we'll be talking about the extrastriate cortex, which are areas in the occipital and temporal lobes of the brain that neurons in the striate cortex project to. Areas beyond the striate cortex are located mainly in the occipital and temporal lobes of the brain and have been identified because they are areas that are sensitive to visual information. If we look at projections from the striate cortex, there are two distinct functional pathways projecting virtually towards the temporal cortex and dorsally towards the parietal cortex. The ventral pathway encompasses visually sensitive areas such as V2, V3, V4 and regions of the inferior temporal cortex of the temporal lobe and including regions such as the fusiform gyrus. The dorsal pathway encompasses visual sensitive areas such as V2, V3, middle temporal and medial superior temporal areas. These two pathways are both anatomically and functionally distinct and have been commonly referred to as the what and the where pathway which reflects their functional purpose. The areas in the ventral pathway are involved in processing visual information regarding the form and shape of objects and their recognition, so what an object is, for example a face. While the where pathway provides information regarding object location and is involved in the process of important visual attributes such as object motion. The inputs to these extra stripe pathways have their origins either in magnocellular and parvocellular cells in the lateral nucleus, which remain separate at the striate cortex. Inputs to the ventral pathway are primarily parvocellular in origin, and not surprisingly, extra stripe areas in this pathway are responsible for shape detection and colour perception and overall object recognition, for example, face recognition. The dorsal pathway receives inputs mainly from magnocellular cells from the lateral geniculate nucleus, and areas along this pathway respond largely to temporal frequency and motion. For example, area MT is highly specialised for motion processing, with cells sensitive to motion over a very large spatial area and are organised into columns of differently directionally tuned cells. Damage to extra stride areas does not necessarily result in visual loss and a scotoma, but rather functional loss or visual agnosias. For example, damage to area MT results in loss of motion sensitivity, whilst leaving form detection and object recognition unimpaired. Conversely, loss in areas along the ventral pathway results in form deficits and face recognition impairment, but not motion processing. In summary, high cortical areas are functionally organised into two separate streams that specialise in form and motion processing. Their processing specificity largely reflects the type of information they receive, either being parvocellular or magnocellular in origin. The processing of information in high cortical areas becomes highly specialised and appears to respond to complex and global stimuli such as faces and object motion.